it is time to start the q a so let me see where i can go first all right i'm gonna start through there's no i i don't have any preferences it's just the one that's right in front of me right now is the goodbye lupus fan page on facebook so let me start there um let me see. Ooh, Luz is in Aruba. Nice. Uh, let me see here. Oh, hi, Petra. See you in the group soon from Germany. Okay. Um, okay, Jennifer, you are first. Jennifer on Facebook. Um, what type of protein powder and green shakes do you recommend and is pea protein healthy? All right, so I actually do not recommend you put protein powder in my smoothies. Uh, protein powders are highly processed and they're not necessary. So first of all, the green smoothie recipe is perfect. Don't mess with our recipe. <laughs> it is perfect. Do not add new things, okay? People do that all the time. They, they start adding other things. They're like, let me put beets in it and count that as my vegetable. Let me put hemp seeds instead of chia or flax seeds. Don't mess with the smoothies. The smoothies are perfect. The point of the green smoothie is to, um, is to deliver the intentional overdose in nutrition that we call hypernourishment that accelerates your cell's ability to repair itself and optimize immune function. Anytime you tamper with our recipe, you're gonna tamper with your results. So there is no reason to add protein powder to our green smoothies, okay? Um, and really, you don't need to add protein if your goal is to get your health back. So all of you guys who are looking for health, don't add processed junk to your smoothies, all right? Yes, pea protein is better than whey, you're not getting milk protein, but it's going to be inflammatory, all right? Because it's processed. So don't do that. If you are instead on Thomas's miracle metabolism path, that you don't have any health issues, but you are now trying to just optimize the aesthetics of your body, you're trying to build tons of muscle and you wanna look like, you know, a sculpture, okay, he does allow for things like protein powder, pea protein, for example, because bodybuilding, intentionally building muscle involves some inflammation. That's part of how you make the muscles bigger. So it's okay in that context. It's also why even in his book, Miracle Metabolism, he tells you don't do that unless you're done with the healing process, okay? Um, you do not need to add protein in any way for your health. Uh, your body can get all the protein it needs from the plants. All right, let's go to Smoothie Shred next. Thomas, what do we got? Okay, first question is from Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Uh, what recommendations do you have for someone with long COVID? Long COVID. Okay, so we've actually had people with long COVID do our rapid recovery group, and I've had people do it uh, in my four-week rapid recovery, and I've had people do it through appointments because it is now considered the new chronic disease, but it does not have to be. Every single person who has done uh, my rapid recovery plan for long-haul COVID had all of their symptoms disappear, usually by the three-week mark. So uh, when I think about long-haul COVID, what it is, in, in my opinion, is, okay, as I've told you guys many times, uh, chronic disease doesn't occur overnight. Chronic disease happens because of chronic malnourishment. So if you have 100 trillion cells in your body, that at some point, uh, your malnourishment from your lifestyle, right? Maybe you ate the way I ate growing up, lots of processed foods, mac and cheese, stuff like that. Um, also other factors from your lifestyle, like stress or poor sleep, that all of these things combine to cause cellular damage. Our bodies can handle a lot of damage before they show symptoms. So a lot of times people will walk along through life and doing what they're doing and have no symptoms of disease and think they're fine. And then something happens and they never recover from it. And they go, that was the day I got sick. And I said, no, that was the final straw. So for people with long haul COVID, COVID is an extremely aggressive virus that affects every system of the body. We see people who are having strokes, who are having kidney failure, not just lung problems, right? Uh, brain fog, it is everywhere in the body. And so it requires a lot for your body to recover from this virus. And for people who were already on the brink of chronic disease because of their lifestyle, because of their diets, COVID was the last straw and they never quite recovered. They survived, right? So you beat the virus in terms of you survived, but you didn't ever go back fully to baseline. So that just shows that you were already on that brink and this was as far as you could get in your recovery, but hope is not lost because all you need to do now is fully hypernourished. 
the people that we've seen fully recover from long haul COVID, all of them were doing our rapid recovery program. And so they were focusing on the entirely anti-inflammatory lifestyle. So again, rapid recovery is something when you're working with me or with Thomas and me in the group, where every day we're creating your entire lifestyle to be anti-inflammatory. So we're optimizing the nutrition, maximizing that overdose called hypernourishment to get your immune system and your body to fully repair itself. Right. And then we also make sure that your thinking is anti-inflammatory. Right. So that you're not having uh, poor moods that are holding your back and negative thoughts that create inflammation as well, because we know that uh, those negative moods, anxiety, depression, trauma are inflammatory. We can see it in the bloodstream and also making sure other things like your self-care habits, your sleep, everything is dialed in to get rid of inflammation, to encourage healing. So if you're doing that on your own, make sure you take that into account that everything about how you're living is for repair. Put yourself in a spa, even if it's at home, and make sure that your thoughts, your sleep, your self-care, and your nutrition are all aligned to get that recovery. So that's pure hypernourishment would be the nutrition. All right, let me go to Instagram. All right. And I hope I'm not making you guys dizzy going from camera to camera, but I am determined to do this Q&A. All right, let's see here. For those of you who are wondering what's happening, who just joined, the Q&A website is down. It's not my website, it's a webinar website. It's down, and so I decided that I didn't wanna let anybody down, so I decided to stream the Q&A into Instagram, Facebook, and my Smoothie Shred Facebook page all at the same time to try to show up for you guys anyway and still do a Q&A today. All right, let's see who, who is first on Instagram. Asha's saying hi, hello. Hi, Mystic from India. Okay. All right, Asimas, Asimas Lam 68 on Instagram uh, says, can your protocol call, uh, cure SIBO? So SIBO is the uh, is, is short for small intestinal bowel overgrowth. So it's, they're looking at... Um, overgrowth of bacteria in the intestines, okay? Um, you know, there's a lot of new tests that are happening where people are trying to solve the mystery of why people have so much gut issues. I can solve some of the mystery. The mystery is solved by the only thing that's in contact with your gut is what you put through your mouth. That's what touches the inside of your gut. And it's why it's so disappointing to me that gastrointestinal doctors are not focusing on this uh, on diet uh, when they're treating people. So uh, the other thing that affects the gut directly is your moods. We have more receptors for neurotransmitters in our gut than we do for our brain. So your foods and your moods are the key to the health of your gut. So that is the most important thing, but scientists are always looking for something else. And so one of the things that they do is that they are testing a lot of different things. They're looking for th signs of leaky gut. They are you know, looking at your bacteria. So um, the short version of this is yes, when people do my protocol, especially hypernourishment, it does fix the symptoms of this leaky gut problem. Because again, what you're eating is going to affect uh, what bacteria survive. The bacteria that survive in your gut are the ones that prefer your diet. So if you're used to burgers and cheese and you start doing greens and veggies, the burgers and cheese bacteria don't like greens and veggies. You might be super gassy and bloated at first, um, not because of SIBO, but because those bacteria are just fermenting stuff because they don't know what to do. But you take a high grade probiotic, you keep going, and eventually your, uh, your bacteria will alter into the bacteria that you really need, which are the ones that support greater health and the ones that prefer to eat vegetables anyway. So I haven't had somebody test like the amount of bacteria they had before and the amount of bacteria they had after after, but we look at the symptoms that they had when they were diagnosed with SIBO and they do fine. And by the way, they do fine even with taking the probiotics. There's a lot of argument over whether or not someone with SIBO should take probiotics because it's a bacteria and they have too much bacteria. But the key is to have the right bacteria and the right diet will encourage the growth of the right bacteria. All right. Now over to uh, Facebook. Okay. Um, Nikhil, uh, on Facebook, on Goodbye Lupus Facebook page, it said, uh, how do you support a 13-month-old on your diet? So I'm so happy that you're asking this because that is the best diet for your 13-month-old. Actually, I made sure my kids were completely raw vegan their first year of life. So most of the first year was just my breast milk, of course. But when they started eating foods, they were raw vegetables and fruits. So we started with avocado, 
which is perfect baby food. You just scrape it with a spoon. It's already mushy, goes right into the mouth. Uh, bananas and anything that needed to be blended down, I blended with a bit of breast milk and ta-da, they, uh, they were able to eat that just fine. And so I really worked on nourishing those babies so that they also developed the right tastes for things. They still prefer and love to eat raw vegetables because those were the first foods they ever tasted. Even for their first birthday party, I did not give them cake on their first birthday. Why would you give a baby cake? right? Uh, so I actually did raw vegan cake, which was made with dates and cacao and some walnuts. And they loved it. And they were covered in chocolate, just like all my friends who had their kids eat cake, but they didn't eat anything inflammatory. So um, the best thing you can give a baby are fresh foods. Uh, I'm very much against giving babies rice cereal, processed garbage for their first food. I think it's a terrible idea. Fresh fruits and vegetables, breast milk, uh, that's uh, green smoothies. It's the best foods you can give your child at that age. Uh, we also started adding in at that point, things like beans, finger foods, when they started to chew and swallow and be able to handle more things. Beans, cubes of tofu, they also love that as well. All right, uh, smoothie shred. Donna, for mast cell reactions to, in spinach, what berries do you recommend to minimize stimulating the release of mast cells? My allergies seem to flare if I eat spinach or pineapple. All right, so mast cell disease, for those of you who don't know about it, uh, is really an overactivity of the allergic immune system, which is very much the similar process to autoimmune disease, right? Is that your immune system that's supposed to deal with threats to the body is rampant, it's out of control. So you really want to hypernourish to get your immune system function normally again, but when you are allergic to the foods that can be problematic. So one of the best things you can do is use low histamine food choices. So spinach would be bad. You wanna use the low histamine choices and it's something you can Google. There's a lot of people out there with websites showing low histamine food choices. When people are in our group, we, you know, we will help them you know, personalize their list and everything. But if you're going on your own, go to a website, low histamine greens. In the greens department, veggies department is pretty much only spinach. The fruits, there's a lot of variety. So just pick the low histamine fruits. And for some of you, you might need a doctor's help right now, because if you are allergic to every food that you try, you might need to take something for allergy just to calm that down while you're trying to get better. Uh, I worked with one woman who had mast cell disorder, and it wasn't just affecting her diet, but even going out in public, this was pre-COVID, she couldn't go out without a mask because she was so sensitive to her environment. Even to go to the doctor's office, she had to go after hours because the scent of someone's soap could send her into uh, total anaphylaxis. So for her, she actually took a mast cell um, inhibiting injection that she would get every few weeks, and that allowed her to eat which allowed her to get healthy. So just like with autoimmune disease, sometimes the medical world can offer some solutions in the short term to help you get to the long-term goal of health. But in the meantime, like I said, use low histamine fruits and vegetables, only test one new thing a week just to make sure that it's a safe food for you. And then you can build your repertoire of foods from there. Instagram. All right, let's go back to Instagram. Um, let me see here. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Instagram names are always fun. Uh, Shauna LeBaron Hamblin. Hi, Shauna. Okay, I know you. Um, uh, strange taste and smell after COVID. Could this help? Yes, absolutely it can help. Uh, we've had people in our rapid recovery group reverse lack of smell and taste from COVID as well as strange tastes and smells from other diseases like Sjogren's. So absolutely 100%, I'd recommend you go all in on the pure hypernourishment. All right, that was a quick and easy one. Let's go back to Facebook. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, so as a Luca Fia, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, for someone who has chronic gastric, used to experience bad attacks after too much cauliflower, what adjustments can I make for smoothie? I don't really like to eat salad. Well, there's no reason to do a cauliflower smoothie. So I would just pick the foods that work for you. And for all of you guys that have issues around one raw food or another, just don't eat that food. That's the best thing you can do is say, okay, if cauliflower really hurts my gut, how about kale? How about spinach? How about chard? Find ones that work for you, okay? If you tend to have reactions to chia seeds, try flax seeds. If you don't like seeds, try 
you know, cold pressed flaxseed oil, but you know, keep moving forward. And if you find something gives you a reaction, take it off the list. If you're struggling where you can't get anything to work, then you might want to consider working with me, right? You can make a wellness appointment with me. I believe the next wellness appointment is the beginning of March, unless you do a rush appointment that can get you within six weeks. We have a group starting January 7th. So there's lots of ways that I can kind of examine what you're doing and give you a plan that's optimized for you. But if you're working on your own, then just keep testing things. Say, okay, cauliflower is a no. Let me try spinach. Let me try kale and keep giving yourself permission to figure this out. And you're only giving yourself benefit because even if your stomach hurt, you're still getting the, the uh, benefits of the nutrition. Okay. Uh, smoothie shred. Okay, Kelly LaBelle, if on dialysis, can you still drink a gallon of water a day or will it mess up electrolyte balance? Uh, most people on dialysis cannot drink a gallon of water a day. So if you are on dialysis, uh, then you now have kidney failure, right? Your body cannot... Uh, it cannot process the electrolytes, the fluids that your kidneys are supposed to, right? So you actually need machines to do that for you. So we have to change the program in that scenario. And, you know, all of you guys are probably aware, I've worked with many people with kidney failure and helped them reverse the disease, right? To get kidney function back. I've published this as well. However, we do have to do things to optimize the program, and that's usually personalized when it comes to, uh, to kidney failure. So anybody who's in kidney failure, especially people on dialysis, if you're stage four, stage five, you need to get weekly labs, which dialysis does for you anyway. And we look at the labs. I look at the labs <laughs> and I determine, uh, is your uh, food intake and your water intake optimal, too much or too little? So uh, the starting point for you should be whatever the water restriction is from your doctor. So usually your nephrologist will tell you how much water you can have without overdoing it. Because if you have too much water, you'll drop your sodium levels and you could you know, feel faint, you could have diarrhea, you could have vomiting, or in the worst cases, if you drop it very, very low, you could have a seizure. So so you don't want to do that. Same with the food. You need to have uh, enough hypernourishment to stimulate cellular repair, but you don't want to get your potassium levels too high. So that's why I really love doing rapid recovery with people who have kidney failure so that I can stay on top of it and keep making adjustments based on the symptoms and based on the labs until we get the maximal nourishment your body can handle, the maximum hydration your body can handle without going over. So again, for, for anyone who's got organ failure, I really recommend if you have organ failure to work with me because it's one can be dangerous, right? We have to make sure that you don't overdo it, um, where as much as you need the nourishment that you don't cause harm because your body's just so weak it can't handle it, um, but also because there's limited time left. If your organs are failing, if you get it wrong, you've lost time and you might have lost function. So I do think it's better to do rapid recovery if you can with that issue. But if you absolutely can't or won't, and you can't even or won't even do an, uh, a wellness appointment, you're gonna have to be very careful stepwise working on nutrition using the restrictions that your, uh, that your doctor gave you. All right, let me see here. Okay. All right. Um, let me see here. Can, uh, uh, Pankaj Chawla, can your smoothie program help or reverse Parkinson's? And I, I apologize for all of you that I'm butchering your names. Uh, when I get to know you in appointments or, or in my rapid recovery, I, I beg you to pronounce it for me so I can learn it. I'm doing the best I can. Um, so for Parkinson's disease, I've only ever had one person do rapid recovery for Parkinson's and he did a four week program and, uh, and he did amazingly well. In four weeks, even though he wasn't 100% uh, religious about it, the Super Bowl, caused some mess ups, okay? Uh, he actually was able to reduce his symptoms so much that his friends noticed and he was able to reduce his medications. After doing the four-week program, he relapsed on meat and dairy and he said his symptoms came right back and his medicines came right back up. So it was one person, but remarkable results. I'd really love to work with more people with Parkinson's. All right, um, I just did Facebook, so wait, no, let's go to Instagram. I, I haven't done Instagram. Um, let's see. Uh, Matha Tribe, I've read many times that lupus is Lyme disease. No, that's not the case, all right? Lyme disease is caused by uh, something that you can get from tick bites. Lupus is an autoimmune disease. However, there's a lot of overlap in the symptoms, uh, so much so that diagnostically, it's often a uh, rule out, you know? Uh, so when someone comes in with certain symptoms, their doctor will often say it's either lupus or Lyme because they are so similar, but they are not the same. 
The symptoms, however, can be very similar. And I've had people with Lyme uh, do rapid recovery who have found that they have had a remarkable improvement in their symptoms. Uh, your immune system is the one that has to clear an infection. Food can't clear an infection, but the nourishment will empower your immune system to function optimally. So then it can work with whatever medicines or supplements you take to actually clear the full infection. All right, smoothie shred. I think I got out of order. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Mary Marin, I have early RA and Renaults. I did the free classes. Question is, can I eat as much veggies and fruit as I want? Protocol says to keep fruit to a minimum. Does that mean only the fruit in the smoothie, 7525? Do I need to wait two to three hours between smoothies? All right, so the question is with RA and Raynaud's, uh, can I do unlimited fruits and vegetables or do I need to limit fruit? So. It depends on how aggressively you're trying to do this. If you are trying to do hyper nourishment, right? The intentional overdose in nutrition that we created that, that accelerates cellular repair and your immune system optimizing, okay? Then you don't have to limit fruit to do that. Hyper nourishment is about what you add. So hypernourishment means that you are having at least 16 ounces or more of raw cruciferous vegetables a day or, sp a day or spinach, of you know, half a cup or more of the flax or chia seeds a day, uh, that you're having at least 96 ounces of water a day uh, if you're over 96 pounds, right? That, that hypernourishment is about what you add. So if you are at an early stage of trying to optimize your diet, help your body get healthier, then as long as you're adding those ingredients, and fruit's not mentioned, right? As long as you're adding those ingredients, you are hyper nourishing and you're gonna benefit your body. Now in our programs where we are trying to get people as healthy as possible in the shortest period of time possible, right? That's our rapid recovery programs, which are either four weeks one-on-one -on -one with me or six weeks in my group. In those programs, I have very little time, right? I have very little time to change your life. 28 days or 42 days in my group. So we're not messing around. We go full protocol, which is pure hyper nourishment in addition to optimizing all the lifestyle style factors, your sleep, your self-talk, your uh, self-care, all of that, so that we can get you healthy as quickly as possible. In those programs, we do limit the fruit to 25% or less of the diet because the pure hyper nourishment program works like gangbusters uh, with no fruit. And it works really well with low fruit, but once you get the fruit up to a certain level, it actually slows down the process. But if you're also eating cooked foods and other foods, you don't have to worry about it because you're not doing pure hypernourishment at this point, you're just adding hypernourishment, okay? So adding hypernourishment, don't need to limit your fruit. When we do pure hypernourishment to go as fast as possible, we do limit the fruit during that process. But once your health is back, you can have unlimited fruit again uh, and it'll work just fine. All right, let's go to Facebook. So I'm just gonna go in order like this now. Um, let me see, uh, Kina, Kina Summerlin, can I use a coffee grinder to grind my seeds and add to the smoothie? My blender doesn't seem to grind them well. Uh, yes, absolutely, you can do that. And with flax or chia seeds, they do need to be ground in order for you to get the benefit of them, um, but you don't want them to be heated and you don't want them to be exposed to air for very long. So what you want to do is uh, grind them either in the blender itself or um, you, if you have a Vitamix blender, a high powered blender, or what you can do is pulse them in a, um, in a grinder, but pulse them quickly, you know, little pulses, and then add them to your smoothie so that they are protected from the air again in the liquid. Uh, if you just put it on grind and leave it, it's going to heat up and you just, you don't want to oxidize the omega threes by heating it up. Okay, uh, let's go to Instagram. Uh, Shada Blackford, is it safe to jump into a raw diet? 100%, absolutely it's safe. Um, in fact, it's optimal. Now, if you jump in versus, you know, kind of introducing hypernourishment and tapering, uh, you're gonna have more gut issues, but those, what's cool about it is even if your gut's unhappy, you're bloated, you're having way more bowel movements than usual, uh, whatever's going on there, that um, you're still going to get the benefits to your health. And in fact, when people do rapid recovery with me, they do jump right in. A lot of times going from a Western diet with, you know, meat and dairy and processed foods to 100% raw, pure hypernourishment diet. So what I find is that the first week we have the maximal gut issues as they're trying to figure out how to get this high level of vegetables in that I'm asking them to get, right? So it's a huge adjustment. Like just eating raw doesn't have to be, you know, people often will eat tons of fruit, other things, and it won't be as drastic as eating all of these vegetables, raw vegetables, all the stuff they're not used to, all these seeds, 
So oftentimes, initially, there is a gut response where it is, you know, whew, it feels like a lot, you're bloated, maybe even crampy, maybe even uncomfortable. Some people's reflux goes away, some people's get worse at first, right? So there's a lot of gut distress initially for some people, not all people. Um, and then it adjusts. So the hardest part initially is the gut. Uh, in the second week, the cravings really kick in. But if you can get to the three week mark, it actually becomes so nice that many people who never ate raw vegetables before, by the end of the third week into the fourth week, are considering living raw 100% uh, because they feel so good. So you can absolutely do it and it's going to be really good for your health, for your cells, for your immune system, but there's going to be some adjustment period for your gut as well. And if you're someone who has major gut issues that needs help with that, that's another reason to work with us like in our rapid recovery because um, that way we can make adjustments. My husband, Thomas and I, um, we created this program protocol a long time ago, but we now have so many people who go through rapid recovery, we've pretty much faced almost every problem. So whether it's too much poop, not enough poop, all sorts of bloating issues, we pretty much have an answer for everything at this point. Um, we're help, able to help people on a daily basis. Okay, this happened. All right, try this. All right, tomorrow, try this until we help them get it right where it's not causing them to suffer anymore. And if you're someone who wants to do the rapid recovery group, if you weren't here in the beginning, um, the group is almost full. All right, we had, when I started this, it was like seven spots uh, and they always, always sell out. So if you know you need that kind of help, make sure you go to goodbyelupus.com and take your spot um, because otherwise you're gonna be waiting a couple months. All right, so just make sure if you want that, that you don't wait for it, okay? Um, all right, back to Smoothie Shred, Thomas. Nina, are there additional recommendations for fibroids? Uh, no, not necessarily. So if you have fibroids, uh, again, hypernourishment is going to be a very good idea. We've had people with fibroids and other problems with uh, the uterus and the uh, ovaries who have had incredible recoveries doing our program. Oftentimes they did the program for their arthritis and then the fibroids got better as well. Uh, one thing you can consider though is definitely uh, use things like flax seeds so you can get the benefits of the, fi of the um, phytoestrogens on uh, decreasing your estrogen exposure. Okay, Facebook, all right. And I'm sorry, Facebook is is deleting comments. So I'm, I'm kind of in the live chat. So if yours already went, you can always add it. Um, Bow dip, Kuar, does your protocol cure multiple sclerosis? It'd be great if you could share a plan for MS. Um, so I don't use the word cure just because it gets people mad, but reversal, absolutely. In fact, um, I was actually just going through my YouTube uh, over the weekend and I was finding all of these stories of people who have fully reversed MS or have stopped the process. Uh, we've had multiple people who got repeat MRIs after our rapid recovery group whose most recent lesion had disappeared, uh, whose lesions are shrinking. Uh, it's a really remarkable thing. We just had somebody in our on our smoothie shred group, actually, who uh, was celebrating her anniversary of reversing MS uh, doing our protocol. She actually did, did it using my classes and my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease for Emotional Help. And she was able to do that. And she got herself into exercising and feeling good. So it absolutely works for her MS. All right. Instagram. Let's see. Um, Miss Sofori Quarantine, and again, I'm sorry about <laughs> names. Um, can you help with arthritis and osteoporosis? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I actually was just connecting with someone who did our rapid recovery group years ago uh, for osteopenia, osteoporosis, and I was asking her how she did. She goes, oh yeah, my bone density is totally normal. Uh, so if you're working with your bone density, what you wanna do is our hypernourishment, plant-based diet, and uh, muscle building exercise those will be protective to your bones. And arthritis is inflammatory. I mean, that is the whole point of our protocol is to get rid of inflammation as soon as possible. If you don't know how to do that, make sure you go to goodbyelupus.com and watch my classes where I spend five hours going into depth and showing case studies and explaining how the protocol works, okay? Uh, smoothie Shred, how am I doing? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Danielle Womack, I have had an enlarged thyroid for a while and I still need to get an appointment with my doctor to have it actually tested. I've just been putting it off because I don't want to be on a pill the rest of my life. I keep hearing that cruciferous veggies are not good for a thyroid when raw, but I have a hard time believing that. Does this rapid recovery work for underactive thyroid? Absolutely. In fact, in Smoothie Shred, if you go to the announcements area, you can find people who have said goodbye Hashimoto's, goodbye hypothyroidism, as well as goodbye Graves disease using our protocol. So we've already proven that cruciferous vegetables can't 
be harmful to the thyroid if people are reversing and eliminating thyroid disease on our program. What's important though, is that you make sure that you're getting enough iodine. A lot of people who are trying to get healthy are getting rid of iodized salt and they no longer have a source of iodine. So whether you're using a couple dried nori sheets a day, an iodine supplement, or you're just using iodized salt, you need to make sure you're getting your iodine every day and you get that in separately from all of your vegetables and you're going to do fine, okay? Uh, I would recommend you go to the doctor because here's the thing, if you don't have enough thyroid hormone, you're going to affect every every function or every organ of your body. It can cause depression. It can cause all sorts of diseases through the body. And thyroid hormone is simply replacing what you're missing. So if you need thyroid hormone in order to function properly, I don't think that that's a problem. I think it's, it's important. I would take it if I needed it so I could function and at the same time do everything it takes with your diet and lifestyle to make sure that you either minimize or avoid the need to continue taking it. Okay, uh, Facebook. All right, um, let's see. And Laura Sanka wants to know if the protocol can help with reversing healing uh, endometriosis and adhesions caused by disease. Okay, so definitely helped a lot of folks with, as I said, different issues like fibroids and endometriosis and cysts uh, and uh, ovarian cysts, even ovarian tumor. We had a doctor who did our program who's ovarian tumor that she was supposed to get removed after the rapid recovery group but it wasn't there anymore after the rapid recovery group. We even had somebody who had ovarian cancer markers uh, that were high and after our group, week five actually of the group, she had them tested and they were normal. So, I mean, it's really optimal for your overall body health and for the health of your hormone systems. Men too, by the way, prostate uh, markers coming down as well. <clears throat> so, uh, it's the best thing you can do, again, to optimize your body's ability to heal. Things like adhesions, I don't know. We haven't looked at that. I mean, adhesions where they're kind of together, my guess would be that you would have to have those pulled apart surgically so that they can heal versus them just miraculously detaching themselves. But I don't know. We would have to see what happened and how, how far can you get using diet and lifestyle. And then you can use Western medicine for the rest. I'm going to take a sip out of my Oya gallon jug. Who's drinking their water? This is a, this is a new jug that I just got from Amazon. Uh, I recommend those of you trying to get your water intake, get something like this. Uh, if you go to, um, either my link on my, my profile link on Instagram or my uh, profile link on my Goodbye Lupus fan page, uh, one of the things I have is my Amazon list. I finally got around to making the Amazon list of all the products that I like for people who always ask me, what do you use for your skin or what books do you like or what, you know, what smoothie cups do you use? Uh, I finally just put it all together for you guys. Uh, so it's there if you want to, but this is my new favorite uh, jug. And, uh, and I paid for it, by the way, I'm not promoting products that I got for free. I paid for it and I like it. <laughs> if it's not sitting with me at the desk, I'll run out. I won't, I won't drink and, uh, and that's a problem, right? Okay, Instagram. Let's see. Plant-based grandma. Let me know if you have any info on trigger finger or thumb. So those are uh, problems that people with, uh, with arthritis can have sometimes. And we've had people do our rapid recovery group whose uh, trigger fingers went away. So it's just, you know, I see you're already a plant-based grandma. Maybe you need to be a high raw or raw plant-based grandma until you can get those, you know, using pure hypernourishment so you can get those triggers to go away and see how far you can get your health. Smoothie Shred. Anna Petrovic, what is the solution for people who want to try to heal with raw food diet, but whose digestive system is so bad, so they cannot digest anything from raw food? Okay, so the question is, what if uh, you want to be raw, but you can't because your gut is so bad off? Um, and, and you said it specifically that you can't digest the raw food. So first of all, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Sometimes uh, people who have gut issues start to really obsess about their gut and their bowel movements, and they will start to examine their bowel movements to see what they see. And if they see evidence of food that looks like what they ate, then they'll diagnose themselves as not digesting food, and then they'll get even more anxious, which causes more gut problems. So uh, that also ties in with the fact that I said earlier that your gut health is related to what your moods and your foods, okay? Those are two important things. So people who are looking closely at their bowel movements tend to be people who are very anxious about what's going on with their gut, which then causes more gut problems, right? So one thing you have to work on is releasing anxiety over it. That, you know, I always say that, you know, what came out is yesterday's news, literally. It's over, it's gone. Don't examine it. 
Your body decided what to keep and it decided what to release. So let that flush away. Don't even look. It really does help. There's so many folks I've treated with inflammatory bowel diseases and irritable bowel and other bowel issues where simply telling them they're not allowed to look at their poop anymore decreased their gut problems. Their symptoms came down immediately just from that decreased of anxiety because they're thinking less about it because they can't examine it. So I, the, the, the sentence that said, I'm not digesting, makes cues me into the fact that you might be doing that. Um, let your body do what it's going to do. It's going to digest what it can or what it wants to, and it's going to release the rest. That doesn't mean you shouldn't eat the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. You absolutely should. You need to. And your body will absorb what it can, and it'll release the rest, right? So, um, so that's one part of it. Um, now, the other part of it would be really dependent on your specific gut issue. So for some folks with severe gut issues, I've helped people reverse ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease. Um, for some of those folks, smoothies are great because it just flows through. The, it's already pre-chewed and it just can go through. The body absorbs what it needs. The rest comes out and they don't have any problems. Other folks feel irritated by smoothies and they can do salads or, or things like that instead. Uh, in severe cases, I recently did a rapid recovery uh, four-week program with someone who had such severe Crohn's that his doctors were scheduling surgery to remove permanently remove his intestines. And he, he was only, I think he's 21. Um, and they said, it's over. The gut is too broken to repair. And for him, smoothies, salads, any, any food caused devastating, terrible pain. He was taking painkillers all day long because the pain was so severe. So for him, I started him on juices, no fiber, because any fiber at all hurt, juices to get a little bit of vitamins, water, uh, some omega-3s from flaxseed oil, just to get the healing process going, using some supplements to bring inflammation down in the gut. And then as he, uh, as the pain went away and he wasn't having those painful bowel movements anymore, we started adding smoothies in at first, just a shot glass at a time so he could bring the nourishment up. And every single set of labs he got, he got his labs every week and every set of labs were better than the ones before it. He's off the pain medicines now. And uh, his parents are sending me updates here and then thanking me uh, that he's on his way. So he's still working on adding more and more food back. But uh, we had to go much slower because his bowels literally couldn't handle it. It's like if somebody has a, a broken ankle, you can't walk for exercise. You have to ice and elevate it. And so that's the way that I ice and elevate the gut, basically, is to give the gut a break uh, while still giving some, some nutrition. Uh, it's a very difficult thing to do, but it's for extreme cases. I don't know that that's what your issue is. Again, I can only personalize a plan when I actually know your case personally. So it might mean that an appointment would be better uh, where I could actually see exactly what your issues are. We, in my appointments, I spend 75 minutes going through your entire history and helping you build a personalized plan. And then I email you all my notes, which is usually eight to 10 pages so that you have your own plan to follow uh, on your own. So it might, if you can't figure it out using the help I just gave you, that might be the next step. Okay. Facebook. Um, let's see here. Um, can we, Ani uh, says, can we still heal if we do hypernourishment and remove all animal products and oils? Uh, well, yeah. So uh, if you're trying, so it sounds like you're asking um, whether or not you have to do pure hypernourishment in this raw form in order to get results or whether or not you can have um, cooked plant foods, raw plant foods, nothing processed. Uh, and and hypernourish and if that will work. For some people it does and for some people they need to take it farther. So what I would suggest is you try it. If you are on a plant-based diet, but you're not doing hypernourishment, add hypernourishment, add the hydration, right? And see how you do. If your symptoms go away, you're done. You're done. That's perfect. Keep doing exactly that. If they don't go away and you are still struggling, then there's two issues that could be going on most of the time. One is you might need to get onto pure hypernourishment to eliminate the disease and then add the cooked food back. Or two, it might be your moods or sleep, other issues like that that are holding you back from your recovery. Instagram. Uh, let's see. Uh, what vitamin, so vegan raw, hello. Uh, doctor, what vitamin B12 do you use and what brand? Happy New Year, thank you. Oh goodness, you know, I don't know the brand off the top of my head. We, I literally just buy it from Amazon. I, <laughs> I, buy, I, I buy a lot off of Amazon. It's easier when you're working all day, you just order and it shows up. So it's a liquid B12. I prefer the liquid supplements over capsules, less ingredients. Um, so it's just a liquid B12 supplement. Um, 
And uh, I don't have the brand and right now I'm using all of my devices <laughs> to talk to you guys, but I don't have a specific brand or company that I promote when it comes to that. I literally just uh, uh, go on Amazon, find a liquid supplement that doesn't have a lot of ingredients. And I use that same with B12 or with vitamin D3. I, I find one that's dissolved in olive oil and it's a dropper bottle. I put it in some water and I drink it. Smoothie shred. On coursing, does this program help with increasing or increased eosinophils count? Okay, so your eosinophil count uh, is again related to the uh, allergic part of your immune system, the allergy part. And so if you can get your immune system to calm down and act properly, then it can also affect the blood counts as well. The most important thing to look at is always symptoms over blood counts for most things. The only, the only time I really look at blood counts as a measurement of recovery is with people who have, you know, thrombocytopenia, right? Where they don't have platelets and we have to see that their platelets are coming back or kidney failure. We're looking at the GFR. We're looking at the creatinine levels, right? To measure recovery. But for most folks, the symptoms will guide you that you're getting better. But yes, as your immune system functions optimally, your, your uh, blood test will look optimal as well. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Uh, Colleen want to know uh, whether or not you should take a green smoothie before or after you take your medicine. I can't answer that. Uh, ask your doctor who prescribes the medicine for you whether or not uh, that would be a good idea. So that's if it's something to do with your medicine, ask your doctor. Uh, it's the best thing that you can do. Uh, let me grab another one really quick while I'm here on Facebook since that was a short one. Is acne or skin rash is a normal initial reaction to smoothies? I started them two weeks ago. Uh, no, uh, if you are having some kind of rash, it could be an allergy, so test that. But at the same time, uh, people who are switching from an inflammatory diet who are suddenly switching to a raw plant-based diet can have a detox reaction where they will have an initial phase of some kind of rashes or acne uh, that will go away. So if it's going away, it could be that. But if it's not, or if it's itchy, then it might be an allergy, in which case, uh, test some of these ingredients, take out things that you might be allergic to. Instagram, let's see. And for those of you who are just joining in going, what the heck is Dr. G doing? Um, I was supposed to do a live Q&A today using a webinar uh, format, a webinar website, and the website's down today. Just, it just, I logged, I tried to log in. It said, our website's down. We're doing our best to come back. And I went, Usually thousands of people show up, <laughs> like what am I gonna do? So I decided to stream simultaneously everywhere people usually see me, which is Instagram, Smoothie Shred Facebook group, and my Facebook page to try to make sure anybody who wanted to ask me questions still could reach me. So that's why I'm my head is turning to all the different places because I'm trying to uh, reach people on all these different places at once. Uh, I hope it's working. <laughs> I hope it's helping and I will reschedule the webinar for those of you who prefer that format. format. Um, let's see. All right, Krug, eight underscore eight. A friend is lupus, cannot expose to the sun. She started drinking green smoothies, but is there something else we can do? So what you're describing is something called photosensitivity, which is a very common problem in autoimmune diseases, especially lupus. As the lupus goes away, the photosensitivity goes away. So I had that same problem. I could not go in the sun <clears throat> with lupus because um, I would get rashes, I would get very sick, I'd get brain fog, I'd just feel terrible. Oh, let me get some more of this. I do practice what I preach. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I, I would get very sick from the sun. So from the age of 16 to 28, I did not go in the sun between the time, like between you know, uh, 11 o'clock in the morning to like one or 2 PM, I would avoid the sun because I'd get sick, which was awful because I couldn't do any outdoor activities other people were doing because that's when they went, you know, the beach and all that. Uh, so it, it really took a lot away from my life. Uh, I feel like losing the sun took more for me than pain because pain, you could take something for pain, but I couldn't take anything for the sun. Uh, once this went away, which for me, it was, uh, when I retested myself and I had no active lupus, it was only three months after I changed my diet. 
And by the way, that was 16 years ago. I am celebrating 16 years being lupus free. Um, so uh, within three months, I was living in Los Angeles, California at the time. I was able to go in the sun with no symptoms and I kept pushing the envelope. I started going out earlier and earlier. I had a convertible. I was putting the, the top down and feeling the sun and nothing. And finally we went on cruises to, we did a cruise through the Panama Canal, 100 degrees outside. I'm outside walking around and I had no relapse and I never have. Now I live in Texas. And I'm out in the sun every to every chance I got uh, over over Christmas. It was, you know, 80 degrees. And I was out there middle of the day, ride my bike. Yesterday, I was flying a kite with my kids. I was teaching them how to fly kites. Um, no problems. And that's what I've seen happen in other folks as well, is that first, stay away from the sun until you're better. Anything that triggers your autoimmune disease is going could could trigger, um, you know, that inflammatory response. You don't want to do that. So if you have a sun sensitivity or photosensitivity for now avoid the sun when you're symptom free and feeling great then you can start testing it again uh, and it's an enormous gift to get the sun back uh, my husband calls me a lizard now because i will just be out there on a rock just <laughs> receiving the sun maybe on a lounge chair uh, but i absolutely love it and it was a huge gift to get that back so with shred sindhu kamal oil is used so much in indian cooking plant-based Plant-based cooking learning discourages usage of oil. When recently visiting a doctor and asked about the same, he quoted saying that any costly car also seizes if it's not lubricated without oil. I am confused and don't want to go wrong with the family. So please suggest how much and which oil to use. Wow. Okay. So if you guys didn't hear Thomas, uh, the, the person who was asking the question said that uh, Indian cooking uses a lot of oil and she had a doctor tell her that oil is necessary for the body like a car uh, needs oil to run. And and I made a face because that actually hurt my soul. Uh, one, because it's nonsense. Uh, not that the car, the car does need oil, but <clears throat> the human body, uh, there's very few oils that are going to be conducive to our engine running efficiently. So here's the thing. Uh, I like to use metaphors, and I will use metaphors that relate cars to bodies, uh, but you can't exactly connect automobiles to bodies, right? <laughs> because uh, you're not going to put kerosene or... <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm not even a, I don't even know, know uh, enough about cars to tell you what kind of, you're not going to put gasoline, okay, in your body, right? So we can't, we can't make that metaphor stick exactly. What I would say is true is just like automobiles, uh, the, you have to put the right fuel. In, right. If you're driving uh, a Toyota, you're going to put the uh, 87 octane in it, right? If you're using, if you're driving a Porsche, you can put what 89 or not, I don't know. I, again, I can only go so far because I don't know cars, but you have to put the best fuel in. That there's different fuels for different cars, um, and so we have to put the right fuel into our body. And the right fuel for our body is plants, hands down. And this is not just supported uh, by research, but my extensive experience at this point, reversing diseases in people who have tried everything else and got themselves sicker or only got themselves partway healthy. The ideal diet for humans is plants. And what works better than any plants is the raw plants, that our body actually knows how to integrate nutrition as it grows from the ground, uh, better than humans deciding that we can alter it to make it taste better. And every culture <clears throat> that I have encountered uses oils, uses other processed things. Um, you know, food has become a part of cultures, mostly based on where we grew up around the world, right? Or where our cultures originated. Um, but a lot of the traditions people have around food come from scarcity, right? So for example, using oil, not only does it make food taste better, but it's filling because fats stimulate uh, cholecystokinin, CCK, which is a satiety signal to the brain. It tells the brain that we're full. So in a culture where there might be scarcity of food, using oils and fats, grease, lard, all of that became popular because it made people feel full. It made people feel more satisfied when there wasn't a lot of food. So if you just had like a little bit of rice and vegetables, you might be hungry. But if you had rice with vegetables covered in grease, you wouldn't be hungry anymore. So it's an empty calorie, right? But it also creates it's a feeling of satiety. It is adding some calories. It can help people with scarcity. And then it became integrated into tradition. 
So same thing with things like rice or, or breads, right? Uh, some people, some cultures use bread with every meal. Other cultures use rice with every meal. Other cultures use corn with every meal. What is it with the grains? The grains are something that are easy to grow and can fill the belly. They're not nutrient dense, but it's a lot easier to grow than things like kale and other, other vegetables that are more nutrient dense. So it's a way to fill the belly and then it becomes cultural. So one of the difficult things about changing your diet is separating out cultural traditions from actual optimal nourishment. Those are different things. So if you're trying to nourish yourself optimally, then you're gonna to wanna to eat plants and you're gonna to wanna to avoid oils. Unless you're talking about flaxseed oil, in which case that's a pure omega-3 basically, and it's going to optimize your health. But if you're talking about cooking oil, no, it's you're, every time you use it, it's a detriment to yourself. So, um, you know, I, I always say, and I know it's a bit tongue in cheek, that you should never take nutrition advice from a doctor, but in general, it's good advice because doctors are not trained in nutrition. Everything that I know to become an expert in nutrition for disease reversal, everything about it did not come from my medical training. My ability to understand it, interpret it, and, and systemize it came from medical training, but the actual education nutrition did not. So a doctor saying, oh, you should eat oil to lubricate your engine, they're talking out of their butt, okay? They're, they're making it up, it's not true. Now, that is not to say the human body doesn't need fats. The human body absolutely needs fats and it's one of the dangers of these fat-free plant-based diets is people are being malnourished of the fats their body need, but fats are not oils, okay? Again, the only oil I approve of is flaxseed oil, raw flaxseed oil will get you omega-3s. But eating avocados, eat as many of them as you want. Uh, eating olives, okay. Olives are different than olive oil, right? Um, eating uh, flax seeds, chia seeds to optimize re, uh, reestablishing the balance between your omega threes and omega sixes. Eating nuts and seeds, things like that, when you are healthy, can give you healthy fats. Our brains need certain fats to function properly. Our skin, our organs, we do need some level of fats. And people who are eating fat-free diets are actually starving themselves of vital nutrients. But again, fats are different than oils. So again, all of that is malarkey, basically. <laughs> don't, don't listen to that um, if someone tells you that you need cooking oils. Now, the good news, I've actually worked with a lot of people in India, and they have been able to do this successfully. In fact, after the US and Canada, India is the number one country uh, that makes appointments with me because the autoimmune disease and chronic disease uh, epidemic is out of control there. And a lot of it is because of this problem that there's really, the culture does not include uh, raw foods. There's no traditional raw foods really included in the diet. There's still dairy in the diet heavily and uh, tons and tons of oil. So they're malnourished. They're still getting a lot of inflammation from dairy and oils uh, and they're very sick. And they're able to do this. I actually have a politician in India, maybe you're watching, hello, uh, who is seeing me uh, for help. And we were talking about this very issue of, of scarcity of, of good food there. So uh, the good news is this will work, all right? Uh, the second good news is there's a lot of different options. So people in different countries of the world often use different cruciferous vegetables or spinach, depending on what's available. In India, a lot of people are using things like spinach and cauliflower um, and maybe cabbage. It depends on what's available to you there. Uh, the other good news is the one thing that plant-based people like to do more than talk about being plant-based and more than eating their plant-based foods is blog about it. Uh, and I have found many, many recipes online online because actually Indian food is my favorite flavors. I love curries. Um, is if you Google oil-free plant-based Indian food, you will find thousands of recipes. So there are plenty of people out there doing this. In fact, when I used to give a talk out in Austin, there is um, an Indian buffet. Thomas, you have to remind me of the name. I want to tell them uh, the name of it, uh, there's an Indian buffet where I would give talks sometimes, and it was a vegetarian buffet, but when I would give a talk, they would make it plant-based, no oil, and the food was just as good. It was delicious uh, without without the oils in it. It was amazing how good it was. Madras Pavilion. Madras Pavilion was the name. I want to give my uh, I want to give them a shout out um, because if you it's their food is amazing but they were able to do it oil-free and it tasted great. So I hope that helps. All right, back to Facebook. Let me check the time. Okay, hold on a second here. And um, I'm gonna be finishing up shortly, but again, I am gonna reschedule the regular Q&A uh, for people who really wanted to just go to that format. I hope everybody who was trying to go to it um, was able to 
uh, was still able to attend today that you found me in somewhere uh, so that you could still get your answers. Okay, let me see. Um, Mike is Goyle, my wife suffered severe acidity when she takes the smoothies. Okay, so if you have reflux, it's uh, it's not because of smoothies or vegetables. You have reflux for, for some reasons, right? So one would be inflammation of your you know digestive tract from your current diet. Um, another is you might have uh, some, some problems with the esophageal sphincter. So there's a sphincter between the end of the esophagus leading into the stomach. And its purpose is to open up to let food in, but then to seal close to keep food in. Right? Food shouldn't come back up. But especially when people have had problems for a long time uh, with, with digestive issues, uh, that, that, that seal will break down and, and some of the food with the acid from the stomach attached to it will come back up and that causes burning. Some people have a hiatal hernia where part of their stomach comes up through their diaphragm and it squeezes on it a bit and pushes food up that way. So there's different reasons that people have this problem. Some people find as soon as they do pure hypernourishment with the smoothies, all reflux issues are gone. And I see that many times, especially in my group. For other folks, not the case. Uh, and so if, that's, if, if the problem is that it's not going away, here's some things that you can try. So number one, um, smaller doses, right? The more full your stomach is, the more pressure there is on the esophageal sphincter. So it might just be a case of too much at a time and it's causing pressure. And since it's a liquid, it's easy for it to come up. Two, make sure that you don't lay down after meals. Make sure you stay upright. Let gravity assist you with the process. Um, and also look at, are you eating anything else that could be slowing down digestion? So oils, for example, can slow down digestion. So uh, make sure that you're not having any other oils with it, that the only fats you're consuming are the ones that are in the smoothie itself and see if any of those suggestions make a difference. Sometimes it's simply a, a change of which uh, fruits you use. Some people, you know, then when they're having things like pineapple or their squirt lemon juice or something in there, that that burns more. But when they switch to, I don't know, apples or, or mangoes or something, they don't have that problem. So the point is that if you're having an issue trying to get hyper nourishment in and you're working on your own, then experiment a bit with the ingredients until you find the ingredients that work for you. Don't try one smoothie and go, oh, I can't do smoothies, right? Um, hey, if you don't like smoothies, you can eat the ingredients. Back when I healed from lupus 16 years ago, I didn't know about glorious smoothies back then. So I ate a couple pounds of raw vegetables a day dipped in guacamole and that worked too, okay? And I drank the oil for the omega-3. There's so many different ways uh, that you can do this, uh, but the point is trial and error until you get it right, or you can work with us. Like I said, we have a group starting January 7th. Um, I don't know if there's any spots left as of the time that I'm talking to you, because we had seven spots left. Um, uh, so there's probably less, we, it, always, it always fills, but if it's something where you're like, I need help every day, that's an option, right? But if you're just working on your own, then you're going to have to just you're going to have to put more work into trying things uh, to find the right recipe for yourself. Just don't give up on it. OK, your body wants it. And as I said before, even if you have side effects in your gut, your body still benefits. So many times in our group, the first week, people are like, oh, my God, I'm so full. This is so hard. But the rings come back on because the swelling's coming down. Right. So either way, your body's benefiting, even if in the meantime, your gut has an issue. And by the way, it's something to definitely uh to explore a lot of people who are put on um you know acid blockers or acid reducers are given them with no end date and those can really affect the health of your gut uh, you do not want to take those forever so make sure you're doing these other things to help your gut get better because uh, that's definitely one area where where you don't want to stay on something like a uh, nexium or something forever it can cause you problems in the long haul all right instagram let's see here uh, creative coconuts, <laughs> creative coconuts. Can you explain more about how your treatment can benefit ITP patients? Okay, so I mentioned idiopathic thrombocyte, uh, thrombocytopenia. So that is an autoimmune condition where your body is destroying your platelets. The immune system can attack any area of the body when you have autoimmune disease, but I use the same protocol to stop it. We have had um, multiple people do our rapid recovery program for ITP and their platelets came back up by the end of the group. It was already back up. Um, so I had one guy who, you know, he had tried everything he could think of before he did the group because he really wasn't interested in raw eating. And he definitely, as he said, wasn't interested in the kumbaya aspect, but he decided since he was there that he would just do all of it. And he did, he did, he said he didn't like it, but he did it anyway, he did the raw foods, he did the kumbaya, he did all of my processes and actually 
process he did uh, at the end of the first week exploring his childhood. Uh, I do a meditation to help them connect with the messages they got as a child that might be affecting the way they treat their bodies now. And he realized that the abuse and abandonment he experienced as a child um, that that was a factor. And he decided to start loving the little boy that got abandoned. And it changed everything for him. And not only were his platelets normal at the end for the first time in his adult life since his diagnosis, but for the first time, he told us it was the first time in his life that he actually experienced happiness. Uh, he was suicidally depressed uh, when he started and he was happy planning his trips and vacations he was going to take uh, after he finished. So that's one of the benefits of doing something like rapid recovery is that um, you heal everything, the, the, the traumas, the emotional wounds, and the actual physical damage altogether. Um, and I think both of those contributed to his recovery. I really do. Smoothie shred. <laughs> With this protocol, can I get rid of endometriosis pain and ovarian cyst pain, which is what I'm having every day? Please let me know. Yes, and actually I already answered that earlier. So I'm gonna give you a yes, and then let's get one more from Smoothie Shred since I, I did answer that in detail earlier. And if you didn't hear it earlier, you'll have to start back. It was one of the earliest ones I answered. Okay, Susan Lee, can this help with ITP? I just answered that, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Nadine Vergara, do you have patients with myosthenia gravis? Yes, absolutely. We've had people with myosthenia gravis do our groups and they can do really, really well. Uh, so it's definitely something to try. Really with any autoimmune disease, any itis, any autoimmune disease, again, realize that our protocol is specific not to the disease, but to cellular repair, eliminating the inflammation and optimizing your immune system. And that's why it works not just with people with lupus or RA or MS, but also people with diabetes, with heart disease, with high blood pressure, uh, people who are trying to lose weight, it gets your metabolism working again. So it's always an optimal thing to add. Uh, sometimes we have to do some other additions. We have worked with people on things like uh, creatine and other things to help muscle function with people with MG. Um, but definitely uh, doing our protocol is a great idea for you. We go ahead and mention this just because we have a lot of people that are continually asking about COVID. Uh, just so you know, this will all be available uh, as a replay after this is over in Smoothie Shred. And there was a COVID question answered in the first 10 minutes of this video. So that's why we might be skipping over your question about that because when you get the chance after this is over, just go back, rewind, and, uh, and listen to the first 10 minutes and you'll get a lot of your COVID long hauler questions answered there. All right. Um, I just had a question on Facebook, Lily, about uveitis. And uh, we've actually had incredible results with different eye diseases. In fact, I think that's one that has to be published too. I'm so busy working. Every time I help somebody recover, I'm already working with like 20 more people who have new diseases. So I always have a list in my head of like, oh, we should publish that. But I've had people with all different kinds of eye disease completely reverse their problems. Um, I've had two people now with this extremely rare disease called birdshot uveitis who are able to reverse it. Uh, glaucoma. We've had multiple people do our group who completely reverse glaucoma uh, within five to six weeks in our rapid recovery group. Uh, if you have any kind of inflammation in the eye, it's great. A lot of people with kidney disease, their vision starts to go bad uh, and their vision uh, will come back to normal again. We've had people stop using their reading glasses. So all of that nutritious blood flow does go into the eyes as well. And it's really a great idea if you're not doing it yet to use hypernourishment to optimize your health in all of your organs. All right, Instagram. Let's see. Um, it's always hard to figure out what these are. Basna Tradhika 07. <laughs> um, hopefully you know it's you when I say it. Uh, hi, Dr. J. I really want to reverse lupus and I have an ANA of 1 to 320. I want to know exactly what I need to start. And I have vitamin D27. What am I supposed to take vitamin D? Okay. So uh, if you guys haven't done so yet, make sure that you're watching my classes, right? So in my online classes, which are free right now through January 5th, in my online classes, um, I go through the science and the information from my book, Goodbye Lupus. So Goodbye Lupus is my story of recovery and the six steps to reversing disease with supermarket foods. So the classes are me teaching that out loud my story and the and the six steps. Uh, and in the uh, final class, there are case studies, some of which, well, all of them plus more in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, case studies and reversing many different diseases using that protocol. So if you haven't done that yet, that's where you start, okay? If you wanna do it for free like this Q&A, go to the classes and invest the time 
you do have to invest the time to learn it or, you know, go to Amazon and buy Goodbye Lupus and learn it that way. But one way or another, that's how you learn the protocol. OK, um, do it and start. Uh, in terms of, um, and if you want like free smoothie recipes, go to smoothieshred.com, get smoothie recipes. That's, you know, that's, I've created all these free resources to help you get started. So you're going to have to do the, the investment in the time to, to get that information for yourself. Okay. That's really important. Um, in terms of vitamin D, vitamin D is essential for the functioning of your immune system. So if you have low vitamin D, it can cause symptoms of autoimmune disease. It could prevent recovery from autoimmune disease. I've seen uh, antibody markers go up from low vitamin D. So you do want to take a vitamin D supplement uh, and get your levels at least over 40. I prefer D3. I like the drops and the way you do that, this is how you replace vitamin D. You take one loading dose of 50,000 IU, and then after that, you can take two to 5,000 IU a day, or you can just do 50,000 once a week and that should get your levels up. And then you have to continue taking it. Almost everyone I've ever seen needs vitamin D. I need to do it too, even though I love the sun, <clears throat> because as much as I love the sun, most of the time I'm in this office, all right? It's just not enough. And we need the vitamin D. So that is one supplement that I recommend universally for people. Smoothie Shred. Lisa Metzler, will this program hurt someone with diverticulitis? No, sorry, diverticulosis. Uh, will this hurt someone with diverticulosis or, or diverticulitis? Absolutely not, it is optimal. So back in the old days, um, even, you know, it was, they were still saying it a bit, even when I was in medical school, again, in the old days, um, that people with diverticulitis or diverticulosis should never eat anything with a seed in it because it'll get stuck in the pocket of the intestinal, uh, it's basically these weakened pockets in your intestines. Uh, so tomatoes were out, any kind of nuts and seeds were out. That's not the problem. Again, as I said before, the key, the key issue that causes gut disease is food and mood, right? It's not the seeds and the tomatoes, it's the dairy, it's the meat, right? So what happens is, you know, um, meat does not pass through the gut very easily. In fact, it tends to putrefy or rot in the gut, unlike things with fiber in it, which will move through. Uh, and it can, it can cause a uh, constipation. Uh, dairies, number one cause of constipation in kids. And as people are constipated and pushing, they're, they're weakening the, the muscle layers around the bowel. So one of the best things you can do is switch to a plant-based diet, use our smoothies, and things will flow right through. Um, I've never seen someone get diverticulitis from diverticulosis because they had flax seeds. Um, but in our smoothies, it's ground up anyway. So there's nothing that's going to get trapped. If anything, it's going to flow right on through. And I think it's important to make sure that that osis doesn't go to an itis. Itis is inflammation, right? So getting those pockets inflamed where they could rupture and it could become life-threatening, that's the problem. So using a plant-based diet, using our smoothies could actually help you prevent that. All right, back to the Facebook page. I'm going to go probably another 10 minutes or so. I'm going to do my best, guys. I'm really trying uh, to, to help all of you guys get attention since we're not able to use the actual um, interface for the website. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. Thank you for all the nice comments, people. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, let's see. Parin, Dina, and how many hours a day do you sleep? Is getting a lot of sleep necessary for healing lupus? Uh, that's a really good question. So as I mentioned, uh, poor sleep can be inflammatory to the body. You absolutely need to get effective sleep. How do you know if you're getting enough sleep? One of the easiest ways to measure that is do you wake up on your own? If you wake up naturally, uh, usually you've had enough sleep. Uh, in terms of healing, listen, you know, the, the majority of the time that your body heals itself is when you're sleeping. So sleep is essential. And I have seen lack of sleep slow people down or prevent them from getting their recovery. And, and it's why in my group, we do focus on sleep to help people with sleep issues. So um, you want to schedule sleep. You want a good bedtime routine in case that is, uh, you know, the problem is that you're like on your phone and then you're laying in bed. You know, you need a good wind down routine. Uh, you need a nice schedule and a bedtime. Uh, but for my group, if people are getting seven hours a day, we give them credit for sleep. But some people need more. Me personally, you asked about me. I like nine hours. Uh, if I'm going to wake up on my own, it's nine hours. Uh, my husband makes fun of me for that, that I like sleep in beauty, you know, that I, I just, I like nine hours of sleep. Um, and I can wake up <clears throat> with less and I'll function. But if I wait till my eyes open on their own, it's going to be nine hours. Um, you know, if it's eight hours, I need an alarm clock. 
Right. Uh, so that's what I do. But you know what? When I was sick, I needed a lot more. Uh, I remember back when I was under super high stress, like in my medical training, I used to get 12 hours if I let myself sleep, which is very hard to get 12 hours of sleep in medical school. But when I let myself sleep, it was 12 hours. Um, so probably because I was so sleep deprived and I was stressed. But you'll, you know, you need to look at that and say, okay, um, while there are some mutants out there that can get five to six hours sleep and they wake up naturally and they're full of energy, great. Most people need seven or more. And especially during recovery, during the healing process, your body might ask for more. So some people think it's not working because they tried doing pure hypernourishment and, uh, you know, after a few days, they feel exhausted and they'll go, oh, something's wrong. You said I get good energy and I feel terrible. I go, no, your body's requesting sleep. How does your body ask you to sleep? It makes you tired. There's a signal for tired that tells your brain, hey, put us in the bed, right? So if your body's asking for sleep, give it sleep. Uh, and then what's going to happen is after a few weeks, usually, or some, uh, mostly usually after about two weeks, people suddenly wake up and go, Ooh, I, I'm starting to tap into that good energy. Um, if you just saw a testimonial from Julie, who did my four week rapid recovery with me, you know, when she finished the four weeks, she was starting to have good days. She sent me a, a gif of like Paul Rudd, you know, running down the steps, looking all happy, uh, where she was starting to have some breakthrough days of energy. So instead of being exhausted all the time, she had like enough energy to function normally in some days where she felt really good. All right. That was 28 days starting to happen. Uh, after that, it continued to get better. And she's now at the point now where she, she said she wanted Dr. G energy. She has it. Her kids are chasing after her now running around. Plus she decided she went from disabled and unable to work from mixed connective tissue disease to starting her own business. Uh, and working full time and taking care of her kids and feeling amazing all the time. So that energy will build over time. But in the beginning, during healing, you really do need to pay attention to your body's requests for, for sleep. Instagram. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Neha.calci24. What more green veggies should we eat to see the results? So if you're hyper nourishing, again, see my classes. Because when I get questions like this, it makes me think you're not watching my classes. But the summary would be that for hyper nourishment, you need dark leafy greens or cruciferous, which usually ends up being spinach and cruciferous vegetables. So it doesn't have to be green, you know, like cauliflower is not green and it's cruciferous. But uh, if you're making a smoothie, usually you choose, you know, spinach, kale, chard, sometimes cabbage, stuff like that. So the shred. Okay, I'm gonna answer a question from uh, Jestro Steph, but I do wanna mention the person who asked right above, Alamesh, uh, you asked, how about autoimmune hepatitis, liver problem, and nephritis? Uh, Please, everybody, make sure that you're phrasing your questions in a way that we can answer directly or specifically. I'm not sure if you're asking if uh, our protocol deals with those or helps heal from those. Please be very specific. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to Magestro. Uh, do you see people heal from Crohn's? Yes, absolutely. And actually, I just gave a, a story of someone who is healing from Crohn's and I have someone he actually he was playing it smart. Uh, he was seeing me for it uh, on during appointments and he booked a, a spot in the group and we had an agreement that like if he could fix it before the group started that we would cancel the membership and he did it. Uh, so a spot opened up because of him. Uh, so yes, absolutely. Absolutely. we got to get the inflammation down and sometimes that takes uh a bit more work in the beginning to find ways to get hypernourishment in when your gut is inflamed. Uh, but ultimately, yes, you can do that. Um, and to answer about the, you know, just in case the question before it was about whether or not our program helps with hepatitis. Yes. Again, remember itis, anything that ends in itis, itis refers to inflammation. And that's what this is about is getting inflammation down. And we've seen people with, you know, elevated liver markers where they call it, um, fatty liver disease or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease where the liver markers are often normal within three to four weeks. So absolutely, it helps with that. All right, a few more. Let me say, uh, let's see, Facebook. Thank you, Frankie. <laughs> this is kind of fun, actually. It's like, <laughs> it's like a speed dating Q&A, you know, just like, okay. <laughs> All right. And if you think this is working, if this is working for you, let me know. Uh, it's, it's good to know if this is helpful. I'm trying my best to help people everywhere. And we've got, um, you know, a few hundred on, on each spot here, <laughs> a couple hundred here, <laughs> trying to everyone getting their questions answered. So I'm, I'm doing my best. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody wrote, uh, Dr. Goldner, how did you know you didn't just get lucky to reverse your disease? Uh, that's a great question, Marina, um, because I've been able to reproduce it, right? So that's why, by the way, 
the reason why I didn't just tell everybody the moment I got better to just do what I did was that's not scientific to me. And I take it very seriously uh, to represent myself completely transparently, truthfully to help others. Uh, and so I didn't want to like my lupus is gone. I'm feeling great. I didn't want to just go, okay, well, it must be my diet or it must be this. Let me just tell people to do what I did. And a lot of people do that. A lot of people you see on social media, they did something, they feel better. And now they're telling everyone to do what they did. And they don't know, am I better because of what I did? Am I better in spite of what I did? Why am I better? To me, that's not science. And it's not, I don't think that's integrity either. So what I did was um, I wanted to make sure that I was better because of what I did and to figure out exactly what I did that actually did that. And was I better in spite of some other things? So there were many different factors. And then over the years, anytime there was an issue with someone's recovery, I would investigate that. So for example, I initially brought people the nutrition, but the nutrition worked really well with people who were otherwise happy and positive, but then people with anxiety and depression, they struggled. And I'm like, oh, I have to examine the mood component. Why are so many people with trauma showing up? Let me examine the trauma component. And so everything I do is results-based. And that's the difference between what I'm teaching you and a lot of what you see online is this is results-based and it's evidence-based. So, you know, before a I was a doctor, I was a genetic researcher. And then I became a Western medical doctor. And for me, it's it, evidence and results are, are integral to the truth of what we do. It's also why I don't ever, um, I don't ever make things up in terms of someone will say, will this help this? If I've never helped the condition that you're asking me about, I will say, I don't know because I don't want to make something up. <laughs> I, wanted, I want to teach you what is results-based. So yes, if I was the only one who did this and nobody else who did it got better, I would say that was luck, right? Some people have suggested maybe it was falling in love, right? I did fall in love. I, I'm still madly in love, hello there. Um, but I was in love with him for six months and I had lupus. And it was after I changed my diet that things started to change. And then after I had my first son, that's when my husband and I said, okay, we've now, I've now been lupus free for five years at that point. Um, yeah, five years at that point. Um, I lost all of the baby weight within nine days of birth. I felt amazing. I was making tons of milk. I had no aches and pains. I still was negative for lupus on my labs and symptoms. That's when we said, okay, this is irrefutable now that the lupus is not here. Why? Now, my husband's also a scientist. So we went back in to examine what is the impact on cells in the immune system from nutrition, because that's really all I changed. I'd, I'd like to work out beforehand um, what was different. I'd always was an optimistic, positive person. So the difference was the nutrition. And that's when we realized we'd accidentally created the most anti-inflammatory nutrition possible. And even then we didn't bring it to the public. We tested it. I, I volunteered for free at like the Lupus Foundation to ask people, would you try this diet? Let's see what happens. And since then now we have rapid recovery programs where, gosh, how many people do you think do our program a year? In the hundreds at least, maybe more than that, right? Who go through all of our groups and who work with me personally. Uh, and, and so we have vast amounts of data from people with MS, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, mixed connective tissue disease, all sorts of diseases who have replicated those results. And that is why I know it's not just luck because it's science and it's provable through results. I hope that helps you. All right, Instagram. Um, um, Harry by hair. I'm sorry, not Harry. Hair by Bliss. Um, I don't have an autoimmune disease, but I'm overweight by a lot. Should I join the group? So the rapid recovery group. While most people do it for health conditions, we do have people who do it for weight. I actually just had somebody message me asking me that. That would it be weird if I joined it for for fat loss? rather than uh, for, for health because, well, first of all, being overweight is a health condition, right? Um, but she wanted the assistance of the mindset work. So, uh, so absolutely. The only thing you need to have to be in my group is commitment. You do not need to have a disease. You need to have commitment. So there are people who join my group. We've had people join in the past who didn't have diseases yet, but everyone in their family had it. And they wanted to be the one to stop it. I was thinking of someone where everyone in her family had type 2 diabetes. And she said, I don't want type 2 diabetes. I'm already getting to be overweight. I'd rather do this now and change the course of my life and be an example for my family than wait till I'm sick and do it then. 
So um, I'm really strict about that. Like when people sign up for my group, what the first things they get is me saying, if this was a mistake, if you're not committed, let's convert this to four weeks so that I can call you. Let's convert this to appointments. Like do this if you're committed, because I want everyone who joins to have their life changed forever, but you do have to do the work. So every day though, I'm posting, uh, for example, there's usually anywhere from two to four videos a day from me trying to keep you focused and motivated, working through like all the negative things that might come up, self-sabotage, helping you through it. A lot of the videos in the first two weeks are me saying, hey, don't listen to your brain right now. Your brain's coming up with reasons to stop. Listen to me, let's focus in. Let me help you connect with your, with your, with your why and the life you're trying to create, right? So for a lot of folks who are struggling with weight loss, they also find that really helpful because whether you're sick or overweight or both, you've got food addictions. You have reasons why you're not eating well and taking care of your body that have nothing to do with not knowing better, but have everything to do with how you treat yourself, how you love yourself. So that work has been very helpful for a lot of people as well. You know, and I had someone who was doing that my four week program for fat loss and she was doing amazing. And after losing a bunch of weight, she ate candy and told me it was a reward. And I went, that's not a reward that's sabotage. And I worked with her and we talked through it and discovered that you know she had had sexual assaults when she was in her late teens and early 20s. And so losing weight is scary because she might feel more attractive and be more prone to assault. And so we had to process those feelings and help her understand that she's now a grown woman who, will, who can protect herself and she's allowed to live in a healthy body and doesn't have to have that trauma dictate what she does to herself now. Releasing that helped her stay on plan and never do that to herself again. So the emotional work is, is important. So if you, are, if you are overweight and you wanna do a group for that reason, it's a great idea. I mean, Thomas is number one fat loss expert He's there to help as well. This raises your metabolic rate. Um, it is extreme in terms of like, you're gonna be eating raw foods, but you can do that. You can exercise and you can work through the mental health aspects as well. So again, you don't need to have a disease to do the program. What we want is people who are committed to changing their bodies, their health, their lifestyle. That's what we want. And it's actually nice to have a variety. I'm actually perfectly happy not having everyone in the group on the brink of dying from kidney failure or other things. It's nice to have a variety where some people are working on fat loss and some people are working on arthritis and other people have kidney issues. Uh, you know, it's, I think that's, I think that's actually really great. All right, let's see. I'm going to do, uh, all right. One more from each one rapid fire. Give me a quick one, Thomas. I mean, quick ones. Um, Here's from Mandy. Is lupus easier to reverse than scleroderma? I see mostly lupus success stories, but not so much scleroderma. So is lupus easier to fix than scleroderma? I would say no, not necessarily. I mean, so in terms of the inflammatory cause of it, they're, they're going to be the same. All right, we get the inflammation down, we get the immune system to function properly again. In terms of healing, in terms of healing the damage, there could be some variety in that, right? Sometimes lupus causes permanent damage to kidneys or other areas of the body, rashes that have caused scar tissue, right? So anything that has permanent damage involved, scar tissue, for example, may not have recovery. But for example, we had someone with scleroderma do our group with advanced late stage scleroderma, who her after two weeks, her uh, physical therapist measured that she had a 20% increase in elasticity in her skin, which they'd never seen before in any way from any medicine. By the end of the group, she was able to wrinkle her forehead for the first time in years and open her mouth fully, which she hadn't been able to do before. So no matter what the disease, this is still the best thing you can do to optimize your body's ability to slow down and reverse the course of these diseases. All right, a quick one from, from here. Uh, da, 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 da. I have secondary, Valerie, I have secondary ray nose with ulcers on my fingers, very painful, what to do? Okay, um, so ray nose can be very painful. Some people find some benefit from medications. Ultimately, uh, you know, people with all different autoimmune diseases have ray nodes. What you wanna do is you wanna optimize with that hypernourishment to get that blood flow into the fingertips Exercise is gonna be important to push that blood flow into the smallest blood vessels in your fingertips and keep warm, all right? Treat any infections, keep warm. You know, you might wanna wear those neoprene gloves in the meantime, but I have had people reverse this process uh, and, and get their fingertips working properly again. I did weekly appointments with somebody last year who was able to reverse that and get her hands uh, healed up again, even during the winter, so it does work. And a last rapid fire one over here. 
Um, let's see. And Q Baricon 1821. If I eat vegan, but not mostly raw, will it help my lupus? Possibly. So if you're eating a lot of animal products, a lot of processed foods, then any change you make in the right direction is going to help you. But hypernourishment is about optimizing your nutrition to reverse disease and to get your health back. So the thing you should do, and rather than look for ways not to do my program, just do the protocol. You can learn about it for free and just do it, all right? Um, and on that note, it's really important, guys. The most important thing that you can do for your health is to start, all right? Rather than look for, well, I don't wanna do smoothies. Can I just eat beans? Just do what I'm telling you to do. I'm sitting here, I spent 90 minutes with you for free because I want you to do this and take care of yourself, all right? And this works. I'm 16 years lupus free. I've had two kids and I'm about to turn 45 uh, in a little over a month. And I feel better than I did in my teens, in my 20s. And I want you to too. So wherever it is that you are right now, whatever point you are at your health, just start. Find some ingredients for hypernourishment that you can handle, that you can do, and start feeding yourself well. If you know stress is one of your major issues, start working on activities to help you with your stress. If you have anxiety, depression, get help with that. If you're not sleeping, let's work on your sleep. But you are the one that's going to figure out how to do this, okay? We get, you know, to work on the one who said their doctor told them they were like a car. Well, we get one vehicle to drive through this life. Each of us gets one vehicle. This is mine. You've got yours. Are you gonna drive it into the ground? Or are you going to take care of it so that you can get to the farthest destination possible? I want you to get as far as you can go. I don't want you to break down, right? I don't want you to fall apart, but it's up to you. I'm giving you the information, I'm giving you the encouragement, but you are the one that's gotta make the decision, the decision to start eating better, to start sleeping better, to start talking to yourself and loving yourself better. This is a decision you have to make and you don't get another shot at this. This is your body. This is your vehicle. And if you want to drive it as far as you can go and to enjoy as much scenery as possible, you're gonna have to make the choice to take care of yourself. So please start. Go to the free classes at goodbyelupus.com, learn them. If you want the study guide, get Goodbye Lupus. If you need more help with the emotional work that you wanna work on your own, get Goodbye Autoimmune Disease. I poured my heart out into that book on all the emotional work that I do in my group. If you know that you're not gonna do this without more help, get more help. Make an appointment with me, join the group and you can get some of this energy every day for six weeks. But whatever it is, you gotta start because you're the one that can do this or you're the one who's gonna choose not to. And I just want you to be well. We're about to start a new year. There's no better time than a new year to decide to try something different, to take care of yourself in a better way than you ever have before. So whether you're gonna keep going with the free stuff and start working on this, do it. Uh, we just had Kim in our smoothie show group was just saying she's, she, she couldn't afford any of, you know, she wanted to work with me, couldn't afford it. So she went to every free thing. She went to my classes, my Q and A's. She watched every video and she got rid of her autoimmune disease. She got out of her wheelchair and she's living her life again, right? Absorb every moment of the free stuff if you need to. You need cheap stuff, get my books. You ready to invest in yourself on a higher level? Then work with me. I'm happy to take care of you. It's my favorite thing in the world. You might see that I love to take care of people. But whatever you do, you're the one that needs to make this choice now on what you're going to do for your health. And I just hope that you make the decision to love this vehicle, this body that you were given. Take the best care of it you can because, listen, this is, you get to enjoy your life. I want you to enjoy your life. There's people who love you, who need you to be here. And I firmly believe every person on this earth was born with a gift that we all lose out on when you're not able to give it. So I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and a great new year. I'm going to try to figure out a way to schedule another Q&A in the traditional format, unless you guys like this better. Um, but one way or another, um, send you all my love. And I hope that motivates you and educates you so that you can get started on taking great care of yourself. All right, I'm going to sign off on all my devices and I'll see you guys soon.